Okay, now this looks like something something I might have been looking for. You missed quite a scrap, gentlemen, and an opportunity to slay a monarch. There was a struggle and the prince was wounded. You've all seen the magical phenomenon covering the battlefield. For any who still have doubts, this is no mundane mist, nor a petty fairground illusion. Most likely, we're up against a blood curse, an old and powerful spell. We do not know who cast it or why. For now, I have one piece of good news and several pieces of bad news. The good news is that Henselt and his army have been halted for the time being. And the bad news? The mist will grow. It may even engulf Vergen. Furthermore, wraiths may emerge from it. Can they be made penitent? With an axe to the head? In theory, yes. But I would suggest putting your faith in a silver weapon. Furthermore, the ghosts will weaken as they move away from the mist. Is there any way to drive it off? Exorcise it? A question for myself and Geralt of Rivia. The Kingslayer? Contrary to what old women at the wells say, he did not, in fact, slay any kings. Of course he didn't. Wouldn't hurt a fly, that one. Look at his eyes. You'll see he's the sensitive kind. Whatever you may see in his eyes, few know more about lifting curses. Gentlemen, I do not require you to understand this phenomenon, but there are a few rules I insist you must follow. Here we go. No one is to approach the mist. It is mortally dangerous. In addition, we need to learn the story of the battle. For this, I especially count on the aid of Mr. Cecil Burden. At your service, my lady. Thank you. To lift the curse, we require some objects symbolic of the war. Ones belonging to those who perished here three years past. Pfft! More scrap iron from that massacre lying about than lice in Cecil's beard. I thought curses were best handled with... Please leave the thinking to me, Mr. Zigrin, and I'd gladly hear less from you from now on. The objects must be magically active and strictly linked to the ghosts of the Fallen. That is all. Let me be clear, you're all to aid Philippa and the Witcher. What are you grumbling about now, Yarpen? Uh, <clears throat> it's uh, something in my gullet. Take a swig of wine. Now, to worldly matters. How many are we? Saskia, you know well... How many? We dwarves are near 200, but don't judge us by our number. A half thousand peasants will come, though you'll get no precise count. My lords? Fifty-three knights and another two hundred armed men. Not enough. Henselt leads five thousand. Five to one against us. What think you of that? We are few, they are many. But we have our walls, low though they be. If we had archers, who knows? Oh, for a regiment of heavy arbalists from Lyria! We have something better. Jorvith's elves. Scoyatel. Gentlemen, I give you Yorveth. What do you seek here, murderer? A hundred of the North's best archers await your orders, Dragon Slayer. You wished for archers, here they are. I take no pleasure in fraternizing with elves, but even a shit coated stick can be a weapon. He burned down the villages of many in my horde. The free peasantry is one thing, but a criminal with a price on his head in all the Northern realms? This is too much. Saskia. Say the word and we'll depart. Hear me out. Yorvath came to fight for me. I trust him and I know that he'll stay the course. Just like each of you. How could you know that? He's an elf. Treason runs in his veins. He's been fighting humans for a century. But for the first time in scores of years, his fight makes sense. The Scoyatel know no peace. They've died for Nilfgaard for the Valley of the Flowers in vain. They've been betrayed and cheated. Now they have a new goal, 
The Pontar Valley could be the first state where no man would have to fear elven arrows when venturing beyond city walls. And elves and dwarves wouldn't live in ghettos or on reservations. First, however, we have a battle to win. You know who we're up against. It's a splendid army, brave and well-led. They cannot be scared off or routed. They have to be killed. I want Yorvath to sit at the same table as we do. I want him to kill Kadweni for us. And I assure you that he'll do so with a smile, if only you let him. If I'm to see a smile on that skinny face, I'm in. Yorvath stays. Bloody hell. Father's turning in his grave, but a must's a must. I say I. Nay, you killed my men, Elf. Remember them? If I hadn't killed them, they'd have killed me. All right. For the sake of better times, and for Kedwin's doom, I Down with the sons of bitches! Cheers! She's dying. Take her somewhere safe and guard her with your lives. I'll gather what I need and join you soon. I'll place my best warriors on watch. Quickly, lads! A letter! She ceased casting spells. Saskia, is she alive? In a manner of speaking, I've slowed her life functions as far as possible. Her condition is stable. Hmm. Well now, who would be... Well... Someone, someone sent by King... Eldest, I'd assume. Or poison Saskia. Do you know the poison? Thormador, commonly known as Mage Pain. It has a terrible reputation. An antidote must exist. I guess that's something that Geralt needs to do. What can we do? Treatment will require herbs, magic, and blood. Not ordinary blood, I presume. Correct. We require royal blood. We could use letho right now. Hmm. The nearest king is on the other side of the Mist of Wraiths. You misunderstood me. It need not be the blood of a ruling monarch. It is the genotype contained in royal blood that is required. Kings issue from ancient dynasties. Over the ages, to survive, rulers needed exceptional resistance and strength. As royal dynasties rarely admit common blood, the strength of their genes remains great. I shall employ self-healing genetic therapy that will teach Saskia's body how to rid itself of the poison. You'll have a drink human blood. No, I shall inject it directly into her heart. Okay, well done. Blood shouldn't be too difficult to find with Princess Dennis around. What about herbs? What kind of herbs are we talking about? I'll need a subterranean variety of purple foxglove, known to the dwarves as the Immortel, and an elven rose of remembrance. Hmm. Triss had a rose of remembrance. She claimed the flowers are exceptional. Long ago, the En Shea, who succeeded in cultivating the roses, enjoyed great respect. Times have changed. As have elves. There are no elven gardens nearby. We must return to Flotsam. Triss has a rose of remembrance from Flotsam. It's her we need to find. Where will we find immortals? They grow deep beneath the earth, 
which should not be a problem as Vergen lies on top of a mine. How will they help Saskia? Mage pain wreaks havoc in internal tissues. The Immortelle will help restore them. What else do you need to heal Saskia? Thormador is a self-perpetuating substance. Any incursion into a cluster of poisoned cells causes an immediate chain reaction. Each tainted cell that is removed is replaced by ten new tainted cells. To interrupt this reaction, I'll need an ungodly amount of the power. A water or air genie, or one of the twenty legendary rings of power would be best. <laughs> one to bring them all and in the darkness bind them. Right. And then I'll have to run barefooted to the top of a volcano. All right, all right. Let's forget the rings. I need a vast quantity of the power, no matter the source. Find something. An immortelle, a rose of remembrance, royal blood and magic sounds like a fairy tale. A poor one at that. No prince's kiss to top things off. I wish it were a fairy tale, especially a poor one, as a happy ending would then be inevitable. May I count on your help, Geralt? You may. What about the Battle of Wraiths? I must first see if the spells keeping Saskia alive are in order. Then we'll consider how best to send the Spectres to their rest. Actually, you could tend to that yourself. Ask the locals about the battle, maybe you'll learn something. In that case, I shall search for the Poisoner. Good plan, you're wet. Only Philippa Isleheart may enter. Okay, here we go. A whole lot of, whole lot of things happened. A whole lot of things happened. Saskia was poisoned. Not, uh, not exactly surprised about that. I'm just a. Uh, why why weren't they guarding guarding things like that sir more oh and it was Henselt. <laughs> I called him Helsent. <laughs> oh wow um, so bad with names Philippa gave Witcher the list of the ingredients for the antidote The knowledge of recipes, ingredients and their specific properties is always extremely helpful in learning magical arcana. And a few could equal Isleheart in that regard. Yeah, I, it shouldn't be such a big, big surprise that uh, uh, the Guidemans or whoever tries to kill Saskia for whatever reason is such a, such a powerful figure. The contracts, the war council. In spite of its dark dwarven standards, Geralt's room at the cauldron proved quite cozy indeed. Uh, ventured out to attend the war council. My, was that ever a debate? Those attending discussed how best to repel Henselt. There were as many positions and proposals as there were debaters and disputants. Luckily, the Witcher's task was simple, to lift the curse from the battlefield with Philippa Eilhart's help, thus getting rid of the ghastly mist and allowing the armies to move against one another. The Witcher would have started right away, glad to leave the debaters spewing words and spittle, but a strategy occurred, Saskia was poisoned. The dying girl was moved to her house, while Geralt, Iarveth and Cecil went to its doors to await news. When only Philippa emerged, the Witcher began questioning her about Dragonslayer's condition, and Saskia's condition was bad and still deteriorating. The Witcher not only had to find a way to lift the curse from the battlefield, but also get an antidote for the poison coursing through Saskia's veins as fast as possible. And related to that, we have uh, several several quests here. As far as side quests go, we do have the arm wrestling quest and then the harpy contract, but all the other ones are considered main quests. Um, so I will see see what I do. 
uh, subterranean life. To call Philippa Eilhart a healer is like calling a drowner an advertiser of swimming. Nonetheless, Philippa was a sorceress, a powerful one at that, though healing was not her specialty. She could help the poisoned Saskia. To create a cure, she needed special ingredients, a dwarven immortelle among them. Geralt started to search with asking one of his dwarven friends staying in Vergen. Jolten, for he was said friend, tarried in the local inn. Okay, so there's one path. Hunting magic. Having been poisoned during the council meeting, Saskia was dying, and nearly everyone who supported her caused now prayed for her health. Among her allies, however, were those who did not believe in gods, or at least in divine intervention. Lady Eilhart, the kind of woman who rolled her sleeves up and started casting spells when things got tough, fit this description. So when Geralt learned that a magical artifact was one of the ingredients for the Dragon Slayer's cure, he reasoned that Philip would be the ideal consultant. Therefore, he decided to have a chat with her at her house. Okay. And on, on that note, I don't think if that Lord of the Rings reference was necessary there before. Like, a, the kind of pop culture references, they, they just don't fit the Witcher's world. I think, uh, I think that's, uh, they were, they were lots, lots worse in the Witcher 1, the few, few there was, but uh, I, they always felt out of place. It's, uh, just, just unnes unnecessary. They, uh, they, I don't think they fit, uh, fit the uh, Witcher's world. Royal blood. It's shame. It's a shame Philippa didn't demand a crocodile's tears and a sorcerer's smile as ingredients of the antidote for Saskia. I believe the Witcher would have had e an easier time obtaining either of those. As it was, he had to acquire some royal blood, literally. There were only two potential donors in the area, Henselt and Stennis. And indeed, matter, matter of Tris Marigold. Further reading will tell you that Geralt accomplished a lot in Aedirn. He fought wars, killed monsters, obstructed kings and caused unhealthy arousal in the sorceresses. You have to keep in mind, however, that his priority was finding Triss. Sorceresses, as all other women do, give in backs. Thus, in his search, Geralt headed for Philippa Eilhart's house. Unhealthy arousal, however, was out of question in that case. The Eternal Battle In the world of wraiths, only, who, only those relics the ghosts had a connection to in, to in life have any meaning. After conferring with Philippa Eilhart, Geralt asserted that he would need items symbolizing ideas linked to war, specifically objects representing hatred, courage, faith and death. The Witcher thus embark on a search for the Dun Banner Standard, believed to be a symbol of death and for sword that had belonged to the infamous commander named Wandergrift, purported to symbolize hatred. The sorceress promised to find a medallion symbolizing faith and a fragment of a suit of armor that had belonged to the brave Seltkirk. Matter of life and death, as you already know, Saskia, known to those who loved her as the Virgin of Aedirn, and to those close to King Henselt as that in insolent venge, had been poisoned. There are numerous stories about how the Witcher cured the girl, how he climbed a glass mountain and placed a healing kiss on her carmine lips. Well, none of those are true. Several unusual ingredients were needed to prepare the antidote, that is, a rose of remembrance, a dragon's dream, an immortal and royal blood. The Witcher began his search for these ingredients. And then we have the Harvey contract that I took from the notice board earlier. So from these, we would choose what to do first. So I think I will go to the inn and talk to Joltan and then go talk to Philippa Eilhart because I need to talk to her about several of these things. So going to the inn, but probably first also visit tomorrow.
Hoggets Blaze.